the title we have lithium ion batteries. And um, I guess everybody in this room, probably 99%, they have at least one device like this one or laptop computer that has uh, lithium ion batteries inside. Uh, probably you know that uh, this battery uh, has um, revolutionized the uh, mobile electronics in the sense that uh, in the same weight or volume you have as much as five times more energy than any other chemistry. So back to 1990, in 1990 we had only one chemistry that was used for portable electronics at that time, computers and so on. It's nickel cadmium. In uh, the end of 1990, there was a, a new chemistry was introduced called nickel metal hydride. And uh, nickel metal hydride basically uses the same cathode as nickel cadmium, which is a nickel oxide hydroxide cathode material. And uh, a metal hydride system that stores hydrogen. So it's a proton type of battery. And uh, by moving from uh, nickel cadmium to nickel metal hydride, we won about 30% in energy density. Energy density, again, is the amount of energy that a battery can provide, deliver, versus the weight of the battery or the, 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 the volume of the battery. It's expressed in watt hour per kilo or watt hour per liter. So I give you some numbers, uh, nickel cadmium, around 45 to 50 watt hour per kilo and nickel metal hydride is between 60 and 70 watt hour per kilo so we have a gain and suddenly which is uh, unprecedented in the history of batteries in 1991 just one year after the launch of nickel metal hydride and i was lucky because i was in japan when these batteries were launched um, in September 1991, Sony started the commercialization of lithium-ion batteries. And from the beginning, uh, Sony recognized that uh, this battery may have some uh, safety issues. Uh, we are back on 1990, okay, like uh, 26 years ago. And um, what uh, Sony did is that they developed a battery that has carbon as uh, the anode and the lithium cobalt oxide as the cathode. And by doing this, they, there, there was a jump in the energy density uh, compared to nickel metal hydride from 70 to 90. So it's not huge, but the reason why uh, Sony wanted at that time to limit the energy density is because of safety. Just to give you an idea, <coughs> the way how we increase energy density of a battery is two ways. One is to have materials that store more and more lithium. So it's like every anode and cathode can be seen as a sponge that absorbs hydro uh, lithium and releases lithium during charge and discharge. So to increase energy density, you have to have as much as possible lithium in both anode and cathode. And this is related to what we call uh, specific capacity, which is expressed in uh, ampere hour per kilo of material. And um, the anode at that time was about 200 uh, uh, ampere hour per kilo, and the cathode about 150. So the, you combine the two, and you have this battery, which was uh, commercialized in 1991 uh, by Sony. And since then, there have been huge uh, improvements in the energy density. Today, the lithium-ion batteries you are using in your laptop computers and in your cell phones have an energy density of 250 plus. So since 1991 until now, we more than doubled, uh, and two and a half, 2.5 times energy density. And believe me, uh, it's not a very easy task because people relate to electronics applying the Moore law that actually we can double the amount of uh, storage uh, in uh, an electronic uh, IC 
uh, integrated circuit by maybe double it every 18 months or something like that. This is the Moore law, which is an, an exponential. In energy uh, density for batteries, it doesn't follow that law, unfortunately. We cannot double every uh, 18 months because uh, you have to keep in mind that a battery is a reactor. It's a, an, a chemical reactor that converts uh, <coughs> chemical energy to electrical energy. And the processes by which this conversion takes place is really very, very complicated. And that's why uh, even now, and I tell you the story, when I met with the, uh, the head of the uh, battery programs uh, with Boeing, it was um, in uh, February this year in uh, California, and he came and he gave us a lecture about uh, how uh, Boeing was able to solve the problem of their Dreamliner. You probably rem uh, remember in 2013, there was a series of uh, battery fires in the newly released uh, uh, Dreamliner uh, 787 Boeing airplane. So Boeing decided to ground the 50 uh, airliners, uh, Dreamliners, uh, for about five months. And uh, you can imagine that the uh, in the stock market, the Boeing lost a lot of money because of this. But they somehow solved the problem. Okay, so now you can take a Dreamliner safely. And then I sit down with him face to face and tell him, look, uh, can you tell me now that you are saying to everybody that you solved the problem, what is the root, you know, origin, what is, why this battery is caught fire? And he said, I don't know, we don't, they don't know. <laughs> so anyway, they solved the problem, but they don't know yet the origin of the problem. Because you have a battery, and the battery by itself is a reactor that can uh, generate some heat, we know it. But also there is like um, all the battery management system around uh, that manages the voltage, the currents, and the temperature of the battery. And that um, battery management system maybe has some def uh, defects in the sense that if you don't control one of these elements, temperature, voltage, and current, uh, you may have some uh, thermal runaway and so on for the batteries. And uh, probably also you heard about the case of um, Samsung more recently, in September this year, um, the Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 7 uh, started to have some problems, fires, explosions all around. And um, first, in the one or two weeks after this event happened, Samsung said, okay, we, are, we, we know what is the origin of the problem, we solved the problem, we just recall all the Note 7 and we changed the batteries and we can use it again. Unfortunately, the new batteries didn't work either. So Samsung has uh, stopped uh, commercialization of their Note 7 uh, and it's cost them uh, a penalty of about 17 billion dollars. It's huge because of the battery. So it means that safety is still a very, very important uh, item uh, in batteries. And it's, if it happened in uh, <coughs> A laptop, uh, excuse me, in a cell phone. A cell phone is the easiest system actually for a battery because you have one system, one battery. Okay, you have only one battery. Now in your laptop computer, you have to go to 20 volts, which means that sometimes you need four, at least four batteries in series. Okay, and uh, that's why more events, thermal events, uh, happened in laptop computers than in cell phones. And then you go, for instance, to electric bicycle, and uh, we are using an electric bicycle, you have to use about 15 to 20 batteries. So the, the, the risk in an electric bicycle is higher than in laptop computer. And then you go to scooters, to electric car, to electric buses. We have some buses here in Marrakech during the COP22. And the amount of uh, batteries is now close to 1,000. <laughs> so <laughs> the risk is a little bit higher. Uh, it's an arithmetic because uh, the probability that one battery may catch fire is uh, maybe uh, below the ppm. It means it's like less than one battery out of one million uh, will catch fire. 
but still it's very high. I mean, it's a, the, 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 if you have a high number of batteries, the chance or the, the risk is higher. Okay, so um, going actually from 90 watt hour per kilo to 250 watt hour per kilo, it was a tremendous work done by academia, people uh, working you know, in universities and national labs all around, and also by industry. Uh, industry, their concern is because there is a competition, of course, if you have a battery that lasts, that gives you 10% uh, more energy, uh, you will win a market. So it's a very uh, competitive market. At the same time, of course, uh, you know, the concern of Sony in 1990 when I met with them, they said, we just increase energy by a reasonable amount to, to be better than nickel metal hydride, but safety is uh, our number one concern. Unfortunately, because of this race to increase energy, uh, even Sony started to use what was actually my <laughs> contribution to this field, which is the graphite instead of carbon. So graphite stores more energy than carbon like hard carbon or whatever uh, uh, coke, I'll give you a number, uh, <coughs> uh, graphite stores about 360 or 370 ampere hour per kilo, and carbon is about 200, 250. So you have a really a much higher uh, energy uh, stored. Plus, graphite has a lower voltage as a negative electrode, so again, energy density comes with uh, capacity and also the difference in voltage between anode and cathode. So the difference in voltage, you increase it by get, getting a, a, a cathode that, that works at a higher voltage. And we went from four volt batteries to five volt batteries. And also from the anode side, you have to be as low as possible. So the difference in voltage comes from these two. And every time you increase the voltage of the cathode or you decrease the voltage of the anode, there are some risks because in between you have an electrolyte and that electrolyte has to sustain something like five electron volt. For every chemist, five electric, electron volt is a huge difference in voltage. And uh, you have to have a system that is stable versus the anode which is very low and the cathode that's very high. So there's like a, some kind of uh, stress on the materials especially uh, electrolyte. And um, <coughs> if you take a fresh battery, just a produced battery from the production line, you open it and you analyze the electrolyte. And then you take a battery like in my computer, which is dead now, and you analyze the, the composition of the electrolyte has totally changed. <laughs> totally changed because every time you charge and discharge, you are doing some not only you are storing lithium in anode and cathode, but you are also uh, changing the composition of your electrolyte because of reduction and oxidation processes. Sometimes these processes generate gas, and you can see sometimes, I have one of my students came to me like a very, uh, uh, how to say, uh, very concerned because his uh, iPhone started to to inflate, you know, <laughs> so the battery uh, changed in volume, and uh, I said, "Oh, uh, don't use it anymore because then it's a sign that you have some gas formation in uh, in your uh, battery, and the pressure inside is very high. So if you reach the threshold value, there is an explosion. So be careful." And I'm, this is a message to everybody: if you see your battery or your phone or something. Uh, you know, increasing in volume or thickness, that is a sign that this battery has to be serviced or at least you have to remove this battery. It's becoming very dangerous. Okay, so now the problem, this is the battery today and um, <coughs> lithium ion batteries, the estimation today for the number of batteries that are used on Earth in 2016 is higher than 20 billion cells and it is increasing expo exponentially. Um, it is increasing expo exponentially because you have three driving markets, main driving markets. One is the uh, so-called electronics, portable electronics, uh, cell phones, smartphones, laptop computers, tablets, name it. All the things that you can, this one maybe has a, a lithium battery, but there's a lot more and more 
um, you know, uh, systems that are using lithium-ion batteries that are our, our daily uh, use. This, this uh, market, I mean, the, the uh, uh, portable electronics was the one who drove the, 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 the lithium-ion battery at the beginning. I would say from 1991 to maybe 2000, that was the main uh, driving uh, markets for lithium-ion batteries. The second one is the uh, so-called electric mobility, where you have uh, cars or buses or bicycles or scooters, and uh, the system can be either fully electric, which means that they rely only on battery, so you have to charge them every day or every time you need to, uh, to use them. And you have the system that's called hybrid system. And the hybrid system, by definition, it's like a, has a, a gasoline-based or hydrocarbon-based engine and a battery. And the, the gasoline uh, <coughs> engine will charge the battery and the system is uh, usually electric. Okay? But anyway, for these two types of systems, either what we call BEV, battery electric vehicle, or HEV or XHEV, hybrid electric vehicles, all these systems use now mostly lithium-ion batteries. And the, the, the market is uh, also uh, 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 growing very, very fast and expo exponentially. Number three main market is storage. And this is <laughs> why I'm here today. And, um, and uh, this is the fastest growing market for lithium-ion batteries in the sense that now we are moving to uh, cleaner energy produced uh, 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 from uh, solar, wind, waves, and uh, hydroelectricity, which are very clean and uh, renewable. And the problem with these uh, uh, new forms of energies is their intermittency. They are not uh, uh, available all the time. Um, by definition, there is no sun, there is no no uh, electricity from sun unless you have some storage system okay and the same thing for wind so if you have a wind field and there is no wind and you rely on this you have to store energy so as when uh, the user the end user need energy it's available and this is where actually batteries and lithium ion batteries will play a major role in this um, uh, energy efficiency in the sense that you store energy when you have excess of production and then you release it when the uh, uh, you know, consumer need, uh, need electric energy. So um, the thing is that when you convert uh, the, um, <coughs> the, the, um, the energy efficiency by using batteries, there are of course many other systems to, to store energy like uh, molten salt, uh, hydro pump, which actually you pump water from uh, a low level, you put it up, you know, and then uh, when you want to re uh, produce electricity, you do the opposite, like in a dam and so on, at the hydroelectricity. And uh, flywheels and uh, many other systems, like thermal, thermal uh, storage systems and so on. Um, batteries have this advantage that they are scalable in the sense that, um, <coughs> for instance, you have um, uh, 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 an apartment and you have uh, solar panels. If you go to Japan, uh, it's incredible. The amount of houses that have this system, I many, many houses, so they have solar panels, they store energy when they have daytime and then use it uh, uh, in the night, whatever, for lighting and so on. And um, so they, two minutes? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so I will stick to the, the time. So anyway, uh, if you convert this, the, um, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, energy efficiency to the amount of tons of CO2 that can be, uh, how to say, saved, from uh, emission and uh, what uh, affect, uh, uh, of course, the uh, climate change, which is one of the hottest topic now with COP22. This um, energy management, smart energy management uh, system will allow us to save about 30% of you know, the emission that we have today, which is huge. 
So that's why uh, many, pr many countries, including China, they are working on this very, very uh, aggressively uh, in Europe. And uh, I hope in Morocco, because now we have this uh, uh, with uh, Mazen, you know, the, the uh, Moroccan um, uh, solar or sustainable energy uh, uh, company uh, in Morocco. They are taking care of uh, solar energy, wind and hydro. Uh, electricity and uh, they have to store energy so we are hoping actually in the future to have a, uh, an ecosystem uh, that allows us actually to produce batteries in Morocco because uh, you probably know uh, uh, OCP which is the uh, official fusion de phosphate OCP is uh, the, uh, the world leader in uh, uh, phosphate and phosphate is used in a battery without element P, you cannot have a battery at all. And uh, uh, because uh, the, 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 the so far, the best salt that we are using in the electrolyte is LiPF6. It has P and F, and without that salt, no battery can work, number one. Number two, we have the cathode material, which is called uh, LiFePO4. It's a, a phosphate, mixed phosphate of lithium and iron. And this material is uh, quite cheap to make because uh, uh, iron is cheap, uh, phosphate is cheap, etc. And there's uh, some niche markets where, uh, including in uh, electric uh, bicycle or electric scooters, where you, you can um, uh, use this material. And uh, it, the, uh, this cathode is the one that is uh, increasing the fastest in the world. So we can actually convert our phosphoric acid easily to lithium iron phosphate and use it in batteries. Um, we also have in Morocco the, uh, a company called Managim. You probably heard about it. And Managim is one of the world leaders in uh, some transition metals, including cobalt, nickel, manganese, but mostly cobalt. They have mines in Morocco, but they also have mines in uh, the Democratic um, uh, Republic of Congo. And they, they exploit cobalt there. and um, but if we, instead of uh, like uh, just exporting our cobalt to China, we can use it in Morocco safely and uh, use uh, cobalt as the cathode material for lithium batteries. So all of this, you know, we have a uh, plus, uh, we have a need to clean um, cities, like historical cities like uh, Marrakesh. Uh, we have many monuments that are back to the 13th century. And if you go to India, you go to uh, Taj Mahal, they will not allow any uh, internal combustion you know, uh, system to go like uh, in a perimeter of a few kilometers. Because they re realize that actually CO2 attacks the marble, you know, of the, 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 all these walls. So it's a national treasury. I think there are so many national treasuries in Marrakesh, in Fez, in other, like um, uh, Rabat and so on, that we have to preserve for the future. Plus, um, if you use, uh, like say, a mobilette, you know, which is very uh, common two wheels uh, system, instead of using gasoline and you use electricity, uh, you gain 80% of the price. It means if it costs you 100 dirham, you will pay only 20 dirham if you use electrical. So after one year, you can, you know, uh, make money and so on because, uh, so anyway, this is all uh, coming because you, you see what happens in uh, Asia. You go to China, most of people are still using bicycles, but they are electric bicycles using lithium iron phosphate and this phosphate may come from Morocco. Okay, with this, I would like to end my presentation. Sorry about, you know, the, the technical incidents, but uh, I hope you, I entertained you for half an hour. Thank you very much. Thank you.